gonna work out. And when you put it in the hands of Almighty God, I see Thank you, God's people, for praising his name because he's more than worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I get my praise on all by myself, and I don't need nobody to help me. Amen. Because I have seen him do too many things that were out of the ordinary for mankind to do. I've watched how God has heard and answered prayer. Thank you, choir. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time, this opportunity once afforded to us, that we can just come and praise your name, praise you for the goodness that you are so worthy to be praised for. Thank you, O oh Lord, for this week's journey. Thank you, O oh Lord, for another time that we have been afforded just to come and share with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we share our faith, we share our struggles, we share our successes with one another because you have brought us from a mighty long way. Thank you for that, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, right now, as I speak unto thy people once again, I'm praying, O oh Heavenly Father, that once again, that you will hide this, your servant, behind the cross, that those who are here shall see thee and not me. Let your word go forth with soul cleansing, light, saving power right now, because I know that you can. I know that you will. I've seen you do it too many times before. Bless now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. For those of you who have your Bibles with you, and if you don't, there's one in the back of the pew probably right in front of you. Pick that one up and use it. And uh, if uh, once you finish, just put it back. Uh, if you forget, take it home. It's yours to keep. Uh, but uh, we want to go to the 28th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, if you will, please. We're going there. There are so few related uh, scriptures that go along with this, but uh, I'm just going to reference those, uh, if you would. Uh, the other references is from John 14 and then from Acts, the second chapter. Those are the reference scriptures that coincide with this particular one that I want to jump from this morning. And I want to talk to you about the power that comes from God. The power that comes from God. I want all of our uh, um, students, more especially, and this going back to school event and time of the year, we were able to supply um, a whole lot of backpacks filled with materials to students who are the less fortunate, some of them in our community, and those who are fortunate and just got in uh, on what we were able to do here for the, uh, the community on yesterday. There were a whole bunch of folk in the fellowship hall. Any of you who were here and got to see that, they fed them and they uh, supplied them with materials that they're going to need as they go back to school. And I am so thankful to God that Lake Providence is able to do that. Uh, I know that there are churches who are not, but I'm thankful that we are able to supply those type of materials. And I don't take that for granted, and I don't brag about it. I just thank God that we're able to do that for our community and for, uh, for our church family. 
And I thought about this particular scripture as we go back to school. You know, as well as I know, prayer now has been taken out of schools. But my thing is, as long as they have tests, there's going to be prayer. <laughs> Some teachers are going to pray. Some students are going to pray. Uh, there are those that we need to pray for that the power of God fall upon our administrative staff as well as our students. And I wanted to speak to you this morning, the power of God. Matthew 28 actually deals with after the resurrection of Christ has occurred. Christ has tarried now with his disciples some 40 days after his resurrection from the dead. He has gone to the cross. He has died for the sins of mankind. He has paid the penalty that we all owed and could not pay. All of the sacrifices of the Old Testament, all of the things that were done in Old Testament times to atone for the sins of mankind, all the bulls and bullocks and all the turtle doves and the goats that were sacrificed in the city of Jerusalem at the temple. And then when they tarried through the wilderness in the tabernacle ages where they had tabernacled in the wilderness area and during that time, all of those sacrifices were pointing towards something, the supreme sacrifice that would come, that would take away the sins of mankind. Now where we find ourselves in the New Testament era of the time of earth is the fact that we are under the age of grace and we have accepted Christ by faith. We have accepted his atoning sacrifice. We have accepted the fact that when we come together on occasion such as this first Sunday to have the communion celebration, the bread and the wine, we actually realize that we do this along the lines of it being in remembrance of the supreme sacrifice that was paid for our sins. This is just not something else that takes up time in a service on the first Sunday of each month. This is representing the fact that we believe by the breaking of the bread, we believe that Christ's body was bruised and broken for us. Not a bone in his body, but the skin of Christ was broken from the whips and everything that he endured. The crown of thorns that were placed on top of his head, the spear that was stuck into his side, his body was broken for us. We believe as the Bible teaches us that the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of sins for many. And any who come into the church family believing that that supreme sacrifice was paid on our behalf, we believe that we have come in under the age of grace. Grace. We believe that we've come in under the fact that we have come to an understanding that we could not save ourselves. By grace, we have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God. It is not of works, lest any of us brag about anything. The only thing that we have to brag upon is Christ being our Lord and Savior. We don't brag on the fact that we are here. We don't brag on the fact because everything you see around you today, everything that you can touch, everything that you can feel, it is only here for temporary use only. That's all it's here for. The clothes that you have on your back, they're for temporary use only, but one day, one day I will receive my crown. One day I will receive my robe. One day I will walk in the city, the new city of Jerusalem. I will be in an area as to where God has blessed 
us to be in that fellowship of believers one with another in the kingdom of almighty God. I know that on this side we have trials, we have tribulations, there are temptations that we endure on a daily basis. But we are guided through and by God's Holy Spirit. I want to speak to you this morning, just, just a brief time that we're going to spend together in the study of his word. The first thing that I wanted to reference is from St. John, the 14th chapter. You remember, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's the chapter that we hear more often and than not at funerals when we hear that scripture read. But that's not a funeral passage. I want you to realize that. There is promises that are made by Christ himself to his disciples at this time. And when you get down in that chapter, if you go down and just run your finger to verse uh, uh, 15, it says, if you love me, he says, keep my commandments. He said, I'm going to pray to the Father that he will send you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The disciples got upset. They got uh, confused the fact when Jesus went to talking about leaving them. They got confused because of the fact he was talking about a kingdom and they did not understand he was not talking about a kingdom or an administrative government that would be on this side of eternity. He's talking about a kingdom that is yet to be. He's talking about a time that will take place in the future as to where he will be crowned king of kings and lord of lords. There were those who still didn't believe all of the works that he had did, all the miracles that had been performed, how he had raised the dead, how he had healed the sick, how he had fed multitudes of just a few loaves and fishes. They still, in all of what they saw, they didn't believe. And with their non-belief came along the fact that they kept on trying to execute him for the good that he did. When he made a way out of no way for some people, they couldn't understand it. When he paid his taxes, they couldn't understand it. We're supposed to pay our taxes. I don't know whether y'all realize that or not. But one time in which they were all, they, they, they began to grumble, the disciples did, about the paying of their taxes. He said, go down, catch a fish. The first one you pull up, he said, open his mouth, and there's going to be something there, and you go pay the taxes. And they did, and gold coins were found in the fish mouth. And he went and paid his taxes. They paid their taxes at that time. He tells us, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God. But when the laws of Caesar began to cross with the laws of God, our responsibility is to obey the laws of God. I want to talk to you about the authority this morning, the authority of a Savior, the power of the true and the living Savior. Here he has told them that they would receive another helper that would come alongside of someone who would be there for them to walk them through this process. He even told them later on, he said, after his resurrection, he said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Stay there until you are endowed with power from on high. Why did he say that? Because of the fact, when we try to do this in and of ourselves, we'll fail. When we try to do this on our own authority, our own power, and believe me, there are folk who are trying to do it on their own and believe that they're doing it on their own. Don't believe me? Listen to some of these folk who think that they're self-made people. I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm a self-made this. I'm a self-made that. 
and they think it has been by their own power and their own authority that they have done these things. But I thank God for grace. I thank him for the fact that I know all things come from him. All good things come from God. He says, if you walk upright before me, he said, no good thing will I withhold from you. And that's what you've got to believe. It's not an end and of yourself that you've made it this far. It, but it's been by grace that has brought me safe thus far. And it's going to be grace that will lead me home. That's what it has been. It hadn't been of my own ingenuity, my own smarts. Uh-uh. Uh, not by a long shot has it been that. Here Jesus is about to leave now. He's about to board a cloud. Go back with me to Matthew, the 28th chapter, and here's what I want you to see. Go down to verse 18. Matthew 28 and 18. And I want you to see what he does. Jesus came and he spoke to them. This is after 40 days of being with him. How there are so many infallible proofs that he was raised from the dead, that he did raise up in bodily form. He is now in the glorified body. Do y'all remember Thomas? Hello, somebody. And I ain't talking about the Thomases who are here in the congregation. I'm talking about the disciples, Thomas. You remember him? He was the one who was absent when Jesus first came back. He was, the ten were there with the ladies in the upper room. And when Thomas was absent, if you remember, when Jesus came and the disciples said, we've seen the Lord. He has been raised from the dead. Thomas said, unless I can see the nail prints in his hands, unless I can touch the area in his side, he said, I won't believe it. I won't believe it till I can see it for myself. After another week, that man had to walk around in doubt for another solid week. And when he did, when Jesus came in and he, he was there, manifested himself in the middle of them. If you remember what he did, Jesus said, Thomas, here I am. Come. Touch the nail prints in my hand. Come, thrust your fist into my side. And Thomas said unto him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, you believe it now because you've seen it for yourself. He said, but blessed are those who have not seen, but yes, be, they still believe. Blessed are you. When you believe on the Christ, the son of the living God, blessed are you. Hello, somebody. When you believe it, I haven't seen it for myself, but I believe that he died. I believe that he rose again. I believe the fact that he's coming back for his church. I believe the fact that my sins were nailed to the cross. That's what I believe. That's what I have uh, staked all of my faith in. Now he speaks to them. He is about to leave, and he says unto them, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Ain't God good? All authority. We think we've got some authority down here. There are politicians who think they have some type of authority. There are foreign dignitaries who think they've got authority. But Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. He says to them, that's where your authority comes from. When you walk with God, you have authority because I'm his, he's mine, and I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to walk on this life's uneven journey with him. He says, go therefore, he says, uh, and make disciples of all nations. He says to them that you are to baptize them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, he said, and then there's an obligation that you have, you have, I have. Teach them. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. He said, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Well, what is he talking about? 
how is he with me? He is with me through and by all of the struggles that I must go through. He's with me through and by his spirit who he departed from heaven to come back and be that person that would walk alongside us. He's with us in all of our situations that we may be fiscal face with. He's with us in our sicknesses. He's with us in our trials. He's with us in our tribulations. Whatever they may be, he is with us. And we do not walk alone. Finally, I want you to see something else. Go with me over to Acts, the second chapter. Now I want you to realize something real quick. When Jesus, after his resurrection, and he had given them the instruction, he said, don't try this by yourself. He says, wait until you are empowered with power from on high. That was his instruction back in the Gospels. When the disciples left Ascension Mountain, when they watched him be taken up from them, if you remember when they were watching him, they're standing there and they're gazing up toward heaven. And they keep gazing and they're watching. It's like watching an airplane when it takes off. That's the best analogy I can give to you. But you can watch an airplane take off from national, international airport. And you can watch it and it's, it's large. You see it quite well when it's on the runway and when it begins to take off and lift off of the runway, all of a sudden it seems to get smaller as it goes up. And you watch and you watch and you watch as it continues to climb and climb and climb until it's completely out of sight. Well, Jesus boarded a cloud. He didn't get on Southwest. He didn't get on Delta. He didn't get on American Airlines. Jesus got on, oh, good God, he got on luxury airlines, which was a cloud, and he stepped on board that cloud, and the cloud raised up a little bit, and I think he hovered there in midair to give a few more instructions, and then it lifted up just a little bit more, and he gave a few more instructions, and the disciples are standing there, and they're staring and staring, and all of a sudden, the cloud just kept lifting up, and they're standing there, and they're looking, and they're looking, and they're looking until he disappears from their sight. And all of a sudden, God did something that was miraculous. He dispatched angels out of heaven that stood down there in the midst of these men, women, and children. And he asked the question, they asked the question, ye men of Galilee, why do you stand here gazing upward the same like manna? You see him go, he's coming back again. Just like he left, one of these days, he's going to step in midair. Gabriel's going to sound the trumpet, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be caught up. I'm going to defy Newton's law of gravitational pull because I'm going up and I ain't coming back down. And they went back to Jerusalem. The Bible says they're waiting now on the promise, but they're not just sitting around. I think that they're discussing some things. I think that there's prayer going on. I think that there's conversation going on that as when he was here, how he talked with them. And then all of a sudden, something happened. The 50th day, he left on day 40. But 10 more days from then is Pentecost. And the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
It says they were all in one accord. See, it's time for the church to get right and get on one accord. They were in one place. Well, we're right here in one place. He says, and suddenly there was a, came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire, and they set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I don't want you to get confused about, about these tongues. I want you to understand fully. Keep on reading, and you're going to find there were people from different nations, different tongues, different languages, different dialects that were sitting there in the Spirit of God, and they witnessed something, and the miracle was there could be a man from Spain. There could be one from South America. There could be one from France. There could be one from the United States of America. And they're sitting right there in front of them. And each one, the Bible says, heard in their own language, in their own dialect, the wonderful word of God. God's spirit has been poured out. God's spirit is available to help you walk. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Do you know him this morning? Do you know him for yourself? Do you know him to be that doctor in a sick room? Do you know him to be that lawyer in a courtroom? Do you know him to be that friend that is above all others? This morning, there is not a friend like Jesus. Those that you have around you, sometimes even family, they might forsake you and walk away from you. But Jesus is a friend that will stick closer than any brother. He won't fail you, I declare he won't. This morning, by letter, by Christian experience, by candidate for baptism. Won't you stand for him today? Be his servant. May we stand as the invitation is extended. Step out now. We want to be your church home. If you're here and you're without one, we want to be your church home. We want to be your brothers what and sisters in Christ. Come right now. When you've done